So a carbohydrate is composed of carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen in a 1 to 2 to 1 relationship. They typically end in the letters O-S-E, glucose, sucrose, deoxyribose is the sugar in DNA. Now the 1 to 2 to 1 relationship is a general rule. There are exceptions. For example, deoxyribose is C5H10O4, uh, but overall they tend to be in the 1 to 2 to 1 relationship. They perform numerous roles in living organisms. Uh, the service for the storage of energy, uh, structural components in plants and insects and fungus. Um, very important to life. The basic monomer of a carbohydrate is a monosaccharide, or what you typically think of as a sugar. Glucose is an example of a monosaccharide. By doing dehydration synthesis, you can turn the basic monosaccharides into polymers. Now, when you join any two monosaccharides together, you're going to make a bond. And in carbohydrates, that bond is called a glycosidic linkage. Don't let that freak you out. It's exactly the same as dehydration synthesis. It just has a special name. Now, if you take a couple of monosaccharides and put them together, you make a simple polymer, like a disaccharide. Sucrose, for example, is made of fructose and glucose. But the more important polymers here are the complex ones, the polysaccharides, which are hundreds to thousands of polymers. Starch and glycogen are both energy storage but starch is going to be energy storage in plants, and it's going to be very simple structures we can see on the top. And glycogen is going to be a very branch structure, and it's going to be energy storage in animals, as we can see on the bottom. Cellulose and chitin are going to provide structural materials. Um, plants use cellulose in their cell walls, and we use it as dietary fiber. Same thing, different word. Chitin is going to be the structural material that makes up an insect's exoskeleton or the cell walls of a fungus. Structure determines function, which is a common theme throughout this course. Uh, starch and cellulose, while both made of glucose, are linked in different ways. In starch, all the glycosidic linkages are on the same side, so the molecule is going to lie very flat, and that's called an alpha linkage or an alpha glucose. Cellulose is going to be cross-linked. The molecule is going to be very rigid and very hard to digest. So just by changing the way these glucoses are bond, you're going to make major changes to the life strategies of organisms. Either you're going to be really, really good at digesting cellulose, uh, like a cow or an elephant, and spend a long time digesting a lot of food with a little help from some microbes, or you're going to do it inefficiently, and you're going to have to supplement your diet with simple sugars, like fruit and nectar, uh, and you're a gorilla or a human. As we mentioned before, carbohydrates are important as an energy source for all organisms. When carbohydrates are synthesized during the process of photosynthesis, the plants or other photosynthetic organisms use them as a source of energy or they're stored in the cells. Uh, carbohydrates are used to store energy for short periods of time. When complex carbohydrates are consumed, the process of digestion breaks the bonds between the larger carbohydrate molecules so that individual simple sugars can be absorbed into the bloodstream through the walls of the intestines. Once inside the cell, the simple sugars are used as a fuel in the process of cellular respiration. But we use carbohydrates as a major energy source because the polymers are very, very energy cheap to build. Uh, they are easily broken down, and so we're going to use them quite often. Do they store the most energy? No. Lipids store two times more energy than carbohydrate, but carbs are much easier to break down, and your body is going to choose that first. Lipids are made of the same elements as carbohydrates, but have very different structures, proportions, and very different biological properties. They're a group of naturally occurring molecules, including fats, waxes, oils, steroids, some of the fat-soluble vitamins, and many other things. But unlike carbohydrates and nucleic acids and proteins, while they are macromolecules, they are not polymers. They're actually made of more than one type of subunit. So we have the gray and the yellow, two different subunits making up this simple fat. So they are macromolecules, but they are not polymers. The most common type of lipid is a fat or triacylglycerol, which is composed of three 
fatty acids bonded to a glycerol, which is a three carbon alcohol. The bond between those is called a ester linkage, which is just the dehydration synthesis bond in lipids. The sheer number of hydrogen carbon bonds makes this molecule hydrophobic, even though there are oxygens. The overall function of lipids is energy storage. Lipids have more carbon-hydrogen bonds than carbohydrates, thus they contain more energy per gram than carbohydrates or proteins, which explains why fats have a greater caloric value. Other functions include cushioning for your internal organs, um, insulation for the body, they're used in cell signaling and cell-to-cell -cell recognition, they are major structural components of cell membranes, and so they're very important to life. Now when you look at the fatty acid chains, that's the difference between a saturated fat and an unsaturated fat. In a saturated fat, all the carbons will be bonded to hydrogens. There'll be no double bonds. This is going to be long, straight molecule, and it's going to be what are mostly your animal fats, solid at room temperature, and these are going to be the ones that contribute to heart disease. Unsaturated fats are going to have double bonds. The molecule is going to have bends and kinks because of that double bond, which is going to prevent them from getting too close together, keeping them liquid at room temperature. Uh, plant, fish fats, vegetable oils are all going to be unsaturated fats. If you look at these molecules, you can see the difference. The saturated fats are very tightly packed, so solid. The unsaturated fats are very open and spread out, so liquid. Think about your peanut butter, though. How do they keep it solid? It's a plant fat, so it should separate. And if you get the natural fats, it does. What we do is we hydrogenate it. We chemically alter it to saturate it with hydrogens, which may or may not be a good thing. Waxes are a class of chemical compound that are plastic or malleable near ambient temperatures. All waxes are organic compounds, both the synthetic and the naturally occurring ones, made from long chains of fatty acids and alcohols. You can see an example up on the right. The function is going to be to perform to form waterproof coatings for plants and animals. For example, beeswax is produced by glands in the abdomen and used to build the comb. Um, the cuticle of plants is formed from lipids and waxes and they serve to protect the leaves and the young shoots of plants that don't have other sources of protection. Phospholipids are the fundamental building block of cellular membranes and are the major part of the film that occupies the air-liquid interfaces in the lung. These molecules consist of a polar or charged head group and a pair of nonpolar fatty acids. It's polar because the phosphate group is negatively charged. So that's going to make the top, the head of this molecule, hydrophilic. The fatty acid tails are nonpolar and hydrophobic. Like we said before, they're the major component of the cell membrane, and so they're going to form a phospholipid bilayer with the hydrophilic heads on the inner and outside and the tails forming the middle of your cell membrane. Because it is both polar and nonpolar, this molecule is called amphipathic and that is an important feature for why they are the major components of the cell membrane. The last major type of lipid are the steroids, which are made of four fused carbon rings. Now, all steroids are modified from cholesterols, and you can see those four rings on the right. It's a very important cell component, but different steroids are created by attaching different functional groups to the rings. As we saw prior, um, differences between testosterone and estradiol and some of the other hormones are down to functional groups. So changing a functional group can alter the hormone or the steroid in extreme ways. Now they're going to act as hormones um, and they will also provide raw materials for the production of certain vitamins. So unlike phospholipids and fats, this fused ring structure is different. They don't resemble the other lipids but they are still grouped with them because they are hydrophobic and insoluble in water.